So I got a question from Brian over at Scrollsaw Village, and what he wants to do is do word art that intersects additional word art, and he wants to be able to design this in Inkscape. What he's really after is designs such as this, where you have a very large font with a nice script running through the center. Uh, this example here uses a person's name, and then we also have some really nice little sayings. And they really are neat designs, but we need to be able to design it in such a way where it's still legible, but you'd be able to cut this out without falling apart. So let's go ahead and design that. And uh, I have Inkscape up, and we're going to use my name as an example. So we're going to use my last name, which is Cook. And then I'm going to go ahead and enlarge that. And I'm going to kind of work over in this area here so we can see what we're doing. Uh, let's go ahead and change the font. So I'm going to go to my text and font tool, and I'm going to select Times New Roman. There it is, and we want it in bold, and we'll click Apply, and now we have our name. Uh, I'm also going to use my family's name, so I'm going to type in my name, so Travis, my wife's Nicole, and my son Gavin. So we're going to take that, and let's make that a little bit larger, and we'll also go into the uh, the text and font tool and we're gonna pick a nice script. I found one called Birds of Paradise and I'm gonna click apply and that's a nice script like that. The spacing between the letters is a little wonky so we're gonna go ahead and fix that uh, and that's gonna be done by kerning. Kerning is just simply uh, putting your cursor between the letters holding down the alt key and then using your your uh, either right or left arrow to kind of pull the letters together. And we'll have to kind of go through each one of these letters and just make it sure everything looks nice. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time since this is just an example. So I'm just going to stop with my name there. And uh, now once everything is current and looking right, uh, what we need to do next is uh, take these letters and because uh, currently they're just a series of letters and fonts. What we need to do is turn those fonts and letters into an object instead of um, uh, font information. Uh, to do that, I'm going to select my, uh, my letters and I'm going to come up here to Path, Object to Path. And what that does is it uh, transfers them from lettering to uh, individual objects. In fact, this is a grouping of 20 objects, and you can kind of see that right there. Well, we don't really want 20 objects. We only want one object. So what I'm going to do is ungroup this. So I'm going to come up to Object, Ungroup, and it uh, breaks apart each one of those letters into its individual object. And now I want to uh, kind of weld everything together as if they're one object. So I'm going to come up here to Object and Union, and what that's going to do is weld everything together. So let's kind of zoom in here. Let's change the font letter to red with a black outline. And you can kind of see that everything just kind of flows together. Now we do have a few problem areas here. We In the A we have uh, uh, an island there. Uh, we have an island in the O and the E uh, in this ampersand and uh, items such as that. So what we need to do is create a bridge. So I'm going to kind of zoom in a little bit. We use the Bezier tool and I'm going to create a simple bridge and I'm just going to kind of create a little box. So let's go ahead and color that box so that's blue. So you can kind of see what the bridge looks like. And in order to um, create that bridge, we're going to use that little box as a cookie cutter. Uh, so I'm going to select the, um, the bridge, and then I'm also going to hold down the Shift key and select my lettering. And then I'm going to come up here to Path, difference and what that does is it acts like a cookie cutter and lops that little section out creating a bridge and uh, we're going to have to do that to each one of these little problem areas the S uh, for example the O the E uh, the A again um, and we'll have to kind of go through each one of those letters and fix those problems I went ahead and already did that so I'm going to just copy and paste over what I have created and let's go ahead and enlarge that and you can kind of see uh, how I did my bridges. 
So let's go ahead and overlay this on top of my last name here and just kind of roughly position it how we think we would like to see it. Something maybe along those lines. Maybe let's take the uh, word cook and let's maybe, eh, maybe not quite that tall, but maybe we could kind of elongate that a little bit and then somewhere in the middle like something along those lines. I think something like that might be kind of nice. But the problem is, is if we take this, take both of these and then uh, we combine them, you can kind of see that everything just kind of gets smushed together and it's re you, you can't see or read that. Uh, so what we need is an outline around the script areas. Uh, so that's what we need to create next. So what I'm going to do is uh, move this down a little bit. Let's give ourselves a little bit of working area. And what I'm going to do is duplicate that. I'm going to control D, which duplicates. And now I have two copies. I'm going to select this copy. I'm going to come up here to Path, Dynamic Offset. And what that does is it allows us to cre uh, grow this, this object uh, much larger. And over here in the, on the top of the G, you'll see this little diamond type icon. Uh, so with the node editor tool, we could click that and just drag it up. And you can kind of see that it, uh, it expands the, uh, uh, the object and it just kind of fattens everything up. And that's exactly what we need here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and I'm going to make that gray and then I'm going to take my lettering here and I'm going to overlay that and you can kind of see my outline. So you can kind of see what I'm trying to accomplish here. So let's go ahead and select both of those and I'm going to go to use the align and distribute tool and I'm going to center vertically and horizontally so that everything's centered nicely and then I'm going to put it into position on the lettering here. I think something like that kind of looks nice. I want this to be centered uh, vertically on the word cook. So I'm going to select cook as well and then click the vertical alignment tool and that kind of nudges things over just a tish. Let's get this full screen again. And this is basically what we have. So now we have this, this gray outline, which will act as a cookie cutter to cut into the larger word in the background. But in order to do that, we also have to change this word, which is a collection of letters. And we got to turn that into a collection of um, objects. So what I'm going to come up here and do is path object to path and now it's a object and in fact it's a group of four objects so what we're going to do is ungroup that so object ungroup and now you can see our individual objects and now we want to weld those together so that it's one giant object instead of a collection of uh, smaller objects so I'm going to come up here to path and union and now it is one object and now I can use uh, this outline that I just created and use it as a cookie cutter to cut out the center of these areas into out of the larger word which happens to be cook in this case. So let's go ahead and see if we can select that gray layer. Uh, zoom in a little bit. There we go. We got it there and you, I know that it's selected because I could kind of see the fill right here is gray and then uh, I'm going to go ahead and shift select cook and then I'm going to come up here to path and difference and just like that it cookie cutters everything out uh, so that it leaves a nice outline for my script. Uh, I'm going to select Travis and cook. I'm going to change that to gray with a uh, black stroke and I'm going to change this to one pixel and now you can kind of see how I have a perfectly cuttable scroll saw pattern. And now what you might want to do is take a little bit, to, a little bit of time and kind of go through, add bridges that uh, you may find, find necessary, um, eliminate some clutter. Uh, for example, in this area right here, uh, the, there's uh, a hole in the T that's a part of the C. Uh, maybe you don't want that, so we'll just select the C, go to our node editor, 
let's zoom in and maybe we'll just kind of delete these nodes here and just get rid of that all together and then that kind of cleans it up there's a little bit of one here we could delete that but we could kind of go through our design and kind of clean things up and uh, simplify things so that it's a little bit easier to read here's another example inside the G uh, we'll delete maybe these here and then come through here delete those and then uh, maybe delete these so I don't know you you'll have to kind of make those decisions on your own and see how you like them but uh, that's basically how to create a word art with a nice script running through the center I hope you enjoyed this quick little tutorial. It went really fast. Uh, if you're a little bit lost and you need to know more about Inkscape, uh, swing over to Scrollsaw Village where we have a class on teaching you how to use Inkscape to create Scrollsaw patterns and we go through all these tools in great detail. Uh, if you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful, I would appreciate a like on the uh, on uh, YouTube that helps me out an awful lot I uh, I also do these videos from time to time including some project builds so if you like to see some of those be sure to subscribe uh, I'm also over on Facebook and I also hope to see you over at Scrollsaw Village um, that's it for this time uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time